talk about how far you might want your nesting box from your feeders, especially if you want to attract bluebirds and how far they might be from, I don't know, should you have them near trees or out away from trees? I see them out a lot of times just completely with no really trees around, maybe 10 feet away, but you know, out in an open field. Well, for bluebirds, eastern bluebirds, uh, and all the bluebird populations, yes, very, very wide open spaces are great. That's where these guys want to be and feed. They'll be at a tree line, and they'll use tall things out in open fields, fence lines off to sit and perch and look for food, like I was saying. Uh, so put your box. Uh, I like bluebird boxes mounted about five foot high, not much lower than that, because I do like to put a baffle on to stop predation from raccoons especially and for snakes. Uh, but if you don't have that wide open thing, put it where you can get some sun, the morning sun especially. Uh, and they don't mind it getting hot, but they like to have it in a sunny location. I've heard a lot about whether it faces north or east or south or west. I haven't seen in practical applications that it mattered too much. There was some of that is, is about, well, the prevailing winds are from this direction and it might take the rain in the hole, but I don't know if it matters too much. Put it where you can put it. The biggest thing is use more than one. It's like you going shopping for a new house and you see the one on the corner, everybody else really, oh, that's a great house. It might not appeal to you. You might want one at the end of a cul-de-sac. So the birds are somewhat the same way. I, long time ago, quit trying to second guess them on where, where they wanted to nest because I, uh, I'll tell the story often that I had my box in a perfect place in the front yard and a neighbor two or three doors down had there's the backyard in the shade and that's where the bluebirds went. So you just don't know. But yeah, open sunny location is great. If you're looking for chickadees and tit mice, same kind of thing, they'll go there. Uh, at, the wood, at the wood line, it's a good place too where they get part sun and they're not too far from the trees. So another thing that my husband did to try to attract them is to take like a branch because that's how they, they eat. Like he just stuck a, a dead tree branch into the yard nearby so that they could sit there, scout, you know, for, for bugs and go down to the ground when needed. And they really use those. It was funny. My neighbor, our neighbors said like, why is Ron doing that? Putting out, you know, <laughs> dead tree, like that's not going to grow. But the bluebirds knew exactly what it was for. Yes, yes. And you could do something like that real close to your nesting box. Of, well, not so close that a squirrel can hop on it and hop right over to the top of your box if you have a baffle on the pole. You don't want any predator to be able to get there. But if it's five or 10 feet away, it's a perching place for them. They love that. They like to stage and watch before they go in and out of the nest at feeding time. Richard, I would have never thought about it. I always think about whether or not the snake, a snake could get into uh, the box. And I know that's so important. We have some vines outside. We have to always cut them back, make sure that we're not giving a snake an opportunity to go <laughs> up that pole, right? But I never right. thought about an animal reaching their arm in there and yep. grabbing something. So they probably want to get the eggs, right? Or Absolutely. Yeah. Raccoons yeah. Uh, can do that. And sometimes uh, if I'm talking to people about they've had a problem with a nest, I can ask them a few questions to find, pretty much tell them what got in the thing. If, if you open your nest box and the nest is destroyed and parts should be pulled out the hole, you're looking at a raccoon nine out of 10 times. That's what got to it. Uh, if the t nest is totally understored, the eggs are just missing and everything looks perfect other than that, probably a snake went in and took the eggs. So two ways you can tell that. And snakes can climb poles, they can climb pipes, and certainly climb wooden things and trees. So uh, yeah, get, put them on a pole, put a baffle on that pole, uh, like a good squirrel baffle or a good raccoon baffle or a tough bird feeder guard to stop the snakes and raccoons from getting up there to the birds. And uh, you'll have a lot better chance. You might not have a problem with predation, but it, what you do, it, it's kind of, you don't like that. It's not a good feeling when you see that. And, but if that does happen, just make sure you protect them the next season or later for that season, they may come back, start over. Hello, this is Richard Cole. I want to thank each of you for watching and I want you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to share it.